So in today's video I'm going to be bringing you a list of my top 10 favourite thriller books of all time that I cannot stop thinking about. Sometimes I'll read a thriller and I'll give it four or five stars in the moment but it won't stick with me long term so I thought it might be quite fun to film a video talking about the books that have really stuck with me and that I think best describe my taste in thrillers. I'm actually going to start with a book that I don't own physically and it doesn't have that many ratings on Goodreads. I read this on my Kindle around the time that it came out and it has stuck with me for the last few years. That is Watch Her Fall by Erin Kelly. It was a little bit of a slow burn but I love it when a book has that slow building tension where you can't work out is it all in the main character's head or is someone actually out to get them. It follows a main character who has just been given the lead role in her ballet company's production of Swan Lake. So it's set within this ballet school which I found really unique and the main character begins to suspect that someone is out to get her and that they really want to watch her fall, hence the title. The atmosphere was incredible and there was a part in the middle where I was a little bit confused. It seemed to be going off on this random tangent so you kind of have to stick with it because it does eventually all come together in the end. I have since read another book by this author that I also gave five stars so yeah I need to read more books by Erin Kelly. I feel like she has a few books that that came out before Watch Her Fall. I think she had another book come out this year as well, but it's a sequel to a book that she published a few years ago, so need to get around to that. Next up, I wanted to recommend a book that has one of the most harrowing opening chapters that I've ever read, and that is Next of Kin by Kia Abdullah. So this follows two sisters, and it's really about a family dealing with grief. There's this tragic event that happens at the start of the book where one of these sisters is meant to drop her nephew off at nursery on her way to work but she gets distracted and forgets that she has him in the back of the car. She doesn't remember until later that morning and unfortunately it's the hottest day of the year and by the time she gets back to her car, it's too late. I think that Kia Abdullah is incredible at writing courtroom scenes and really showing what this family are going through. It's very dark, there's lots of twists and turns, and the thing about this book is that it reminded me a lot of an episode of a TV show that I watched when I was a kid. I say I was a kid, I was probably like a teenager. I would not be surprised if Kia Abdullah has also watched this TV show because there were certain twists in this that were very similar to that episode. I think if I hadn't seen that TV show before reading this, then I wouldn't have seen a lot of the twists come in. But they're, because there were so many twists, it still managed to surprise me. Next on my list is another crime thriller, and that is The Trap by Catherine Ryan Howard. So this is the same author who wrote The Nothing Man and Runtime. Runtime, I used to say, was my favourite book by Catherine Ryan Howard, but I think The Trap has actually stuck with me most much longer. We're following this woman who is desperately trying to find her sister. So her sister went missing a few years ago and this is actually based on real life history. There were women who went missing in Ireland in the 90s and they were never found. But we're following this main character and she desperately wants to find her sister and she decides to take matters into her own hands. It's multi-POV so you have chapters from this woman's perspective but you also see the police and what they're investigating and you also get the perspective of someone who you assume is the killer and those chapters made my skin crawl. They were so uncomfortable but in a way that was done deliberately. It is a slow burn but it's less than 300 pages so I found that I got through it quite quickly. I think I read it in less than 24 hours and the sense of dread that I felt as I realised where we were going with this story and what we were building up to. I think that's why it stuck with me long term and I would recommend this in particular if you like a book that has a lot of social commentary. There's discussions around the way that the police handle investigations when women go missing and I thought that was also done really well. Whenever someone asks me to talk about my favourite books I always struggle to give just one recommendation but if I was to recommend just one thriller that really encompasses my taste in this genre I would choose Three Hours by Rosamund Lupton. This is one of the most tense and suspenseful books that I have ever read. It's set in England and it follows a hostage situation.
situation at this school. The way that Rosamund Lupton takes you inside the minds of these characters and makes you feel everything that they're feeling. One of the best literary thrillers that I've ever read, I think I'd probably describe it more of a suspense, but it fits across a few different genres. So if you like a book that kind of blends a few different genres, then again, it's one that I would recommend. Next up we have, I think, the most recent book that I read from this list, and that is The Devotion of Suspect X by Kigo Higashino. I read this back in January, and I can't remember if I gave it four or five stars at the time, but based on how I feel about it now, nearly six months later, it's definitely five stars. I think this is actually still one of my favourite books that I've read so far this year. It was the structure that really stood out to me. So the opening to this follows a woman who gets caught up in this crime that's committed. The perspective then changes to this police officer who's investigating that crime. So from the beginning, you kind of know what happened, but it's this cat and mouse type situation where you're watching to see whether the police can work out what actually happened. But as the reader, you don't know everything that happened. You can definitely see why this was a bestseller in Japan. It's actually translated fiction. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. It was originally published in Japanese, but I read the English translation and I did have a few issues with the translation. It felt a little bit stilted and it was difficult to work out whether that was just the writing or the translation, but the actual story I thought was fantastic, really clever. Now, if you're looking for a book that is gonna keep you awake until three or four o'clock in the morning, then may I introduce you to 13 by Steve Kavanagh. This is a book that I read a few years ago. It's actually part of the series. I think it's book four or five in the series, but I hadn't read any of the previous books, so I don't think that's necessary because each book follows the same lawyer, but a different case that he's working on. All you need to know is the tagline, the serial killer isn't on trial, he's on the jury. So we follow this main character, Eddie Flynn, as he's representing this guy who's been accused of murder, but the serial killer is actually one of the jurors, and you do also get their perspective as well. Because it's been so long since I read this, I'm really struggling to remember details of the plot, but I can remember how absorbed I felt, and how I started reading it about nine o'clock in the evening, and then it got to midnight and I thought, I need to go to sleep. So I put it down, tried to sleep, couldn't sleep, woke up again around 1am and then kept reading until I finished it around three or four in the morning. So if you're looking for a book that's going to grip you like that, then I would really recommend 13. I have also since read 5050, which is the book that comes after this, and I would really recommend that as well. This list would not have been complete without including The One by John Mars. Every time I have to talk about this book, I get really excited because I loved this book. It was so dark, so twisty and there is literally a cliffhanger at the end of every chapter. So as soon as you start reading it, as soon as you get a few chapters in, that's it, you're hooked. You don't want to put it down because you'll get to the end of a chapter and think, well, I can't leave it there. I need to keep reading. This is set in a future society where this company have come up with a way to match people based on DNA. So if you want to find your soulmate, basically you take a cheek swab, send it off to this company and and if your soulmate has also sent in their DNA, then you'll get an email saying you have a match. This book basically follows five people, I think it's five people, who have just had that notification that their DNA match has been found. The social commentary in this is incredible. It's really a story about how society has been changed by this discovery, how it's affected relationships, and how it's affected attitudes towards dating. It's very dark, just as a war it's quite violent in places and a little bit gory. But yeah, it was the social commentary that I really appreciated and John Mars has since wrote several more books set within this universe that all deal with different elements of society. Feels like a Black Mirror episode, so if you like Black Mirror, would recommend this. The next book on my list to talk about is The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. This is a book that I was convinced I was never going to read because it came out a few years ago and 
even though I'd seen people hyping it up at the time, I thought that ship had sailed and I was just never going to get round to it. But I kept seeing people recommend this as a book to read if you want a thriller that has a twist or several twists that you won't see come in. So I was curious because that is one of my buzzwords or phrases. If someone tells me a thriller has a twist that I won't see come in, then I'm going to want to read it. <laughs> so I picked up the audiobook and can confirm this had a twist I did not see come in. It's very loosely inspired by Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith. Why is that author's name so difficult to say? It was very loosely inspired by that. So we are introduced to this guy who's at an airport bar when he strikes up a conversation with a very attractive woman and starts complaining about his marriage, how he thinks his wife is cheating on him and he wants to get revenge. And this woman may or may not agree to help him. I think that's all you really need to know initially, but this was not what I was expecting. It's multi-POV, so you get a few different perspectives. And the ending, I think, is one of the best endings that I've ever read to a thriller. Some people might not like it, but I thought the ending was perfect. And I'm a little bit nervous that there's a sequel to this. I haven't decided yet if I want to read it because that ending was just so good. <laughs> We're getting into the really popular books now, but the next book I wanted to talk about is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is my favourite book by Riley Sager. I've had mixed experiences with his books in the past, but this is the one I think that stuck with me the longest alongside Lock Every Door. Both of them have a haunted house type vibe, except lock every door is more like a haunted apartment building. But this has a haunted house type vibe. We're following a main character who, when she was a child, she can't remember this, but when she was a kid, her parents lived in this house that they claimed was haunted. So they fled in the middle of the night, never returned, and her dad wrote a book about their experience that made him kind of famous. So our main character has had this looming over her her entire life, and when her dad passes away, she inherits this house, which she's quite surprised at because she thought he'd sold it years ago. And against her mom's wishes, she decides to return to this house and get it ready for resale. Should have said actually that she believes her parents' account was complete rubbish. She thinks that they made it all up. However, once she arrives at this house, she begins to suspect that maybe they were right and this house is actually haunted. It has a narrative structure that I I really love because it's a book within a book. So you have chapters that are told from our main character's perspective, but you also have chapters from this book that her dad wrote. And I thought it was really creepy, really eerie, and it had lots and lots of twists that I didn't see come in. The final book on my list I was actually really surprised to see was the most popular book according to Goodreads. But I guess I shouldn't have been surprised because it is by an extremely popular author. And this is my favourite book by them. The book I'm talking about is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This I read a few years ago and I still think about it to this day. I can still viscerally remember how anxious I felt while reading this. So we follow a main character who accepts a job working as a nanny for this family who live in the Scottish Highlands. So they live in the middle of nowhere. It's very isolated and I love an isolated thriller. You know from the very beginning that this main character is now in prison because of something that happened while she was working for this family. And it's written like she's writing a letter to a lawyer begging for help because she is insisting that she's innocent of what she's been accused of. I devoured this because I needed to know how it was going to end. And I've heard some people didn't like the ending. I actually thought the ending was quite clever. Didn't see it come in, didn't predict what direction it was going to go in. And yeah, don't know how I would feel about this if I read it now, having now read more of Ruth Ware's books, but because of how I felt while I was reading this, I still maintain that this is my favourite book by Ruth Ware. It's a really hot day today and I feel like my hair has got frizzier and frizzier the further that I've got into filming, but that does bring me to the end of this video, so thank you for watching if you made it this far. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books on my list and what you thought of them. Let me know some of your favourite thrillers of all time, if you can think of some favourite thrillers of all time, because I found it really hard to narrow this list down. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it 
and click subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me, but otherwise I will see you next time. Bye!